Okay, so what's up? Um, I'm just here because um, I would just, I actually am about to start making a video series about where I am in life right now, uh, the things that I'm dealing with and going through, and how life is kind of set up for me right now. Uh, honestly, I don't know why I'm doing this because I've never dreamed of like really just kind of like showing people where I'm at in life until I was in like what I think is like a higher place so that I can kind of show you the past and how I moved on from there. But uh, for all of my spiritual people out there, because that's who this channel is really for, those who have more of a spiritual path, um, spirit, my higher self, God, creator, however you want to, you know, word that, title that, however you want to put that, um, kind of basically gave me a message that I should share what, what life is like for me, uh, right now. And just like stories of people who are around me in a similar position, basically just like it was almost like an expose it all kind of moment. I just kind of heard expose it all, you know, let everyone know, especially since just recently I met, I met this multimedia, um, um, like content creator, uh, you know, interview person, however you want to call that. I'm sorry. I'm like butchering this title. I'm really bad with titles, but, um, his name is JD career. And, um, he basically uh, let me, uh, he, we had like, it was like basically like a thing where he came and kind of spoke about his, uh, his job and just like giving the content creators and filmmakers and actors and, you know, producers in the program that I live at, you know, just like advice about um, the industry and how to like move forward and just like creative, you know, you know, pearls of wisdom. So with that being said, he basically, uh, let us know that, um, talking about homelessness and, you know, all of those, uh, type of, you know, topics and what that entails is like a really important thing to, uh, document and, um, you know, this is about telling stories, so this is an important story to tell, pretty much, to make it all so simple. So, I thought I'd start in a very basic way and just pretty much record what my day-to-day -day life is like, the stories I hear. Uh, you'll hear from other people that are around me, things that happen around me, uh, and yeah. So, I'm going to just jump right into it by saying, you know, just kind of telling you guys what I'm doing right now, where I'm at, and why this is important. So, and just like the real deal so that you can know what it's like to be in this position. So if you are new to my channel and you are not aware, and you probably aren't aware anyway, because I have not been this specific about uh, my life or anything in this way just yet, um, I was saving it, but I'm just going to break it on out now. I live in Hollywood, uh, in Los Angeles, California, Hollywood. Um, and, um, I live, uh, in a TLP, TLP program, sorry, <laughs> my wisdom teeth are growing in, so sometimes I talk kind of weird, my tongue gets in the way, but anyway, I live in a TLP, which is pretty much a transitional living program, so basically, this program is for people, uh, young people between ages 18 to 24 who need assistance with um, long-term housing, short-term housing, whatever they're looking for. Uh, and my situation is just a little special because I have a chronic illness that I deal with. So, um, yeah, I trying to get as much, uh, you know, um, as much, um, guidance and direction as to how I can set myself up in this state. Because as everyone knows, it's super expensive to live here and, um, it's just not easy. There's people older than me, younger than me that would like die for this kind of opportunity and position. However, I just learned that technically everyone who lives here is homeless. All, all the kids, all the young people rather who live here are like coming from group homes, foster care, um, 
you know, they're just, we're just the discarded youth, pretty much people who have really, you know, have come up with issue like problems in their life and they just need further guidance and direction. So it's a lot of people who come from like troubled homes and dysfunctional homes or didn't have anyone raising them. But anyway, let's just jump into life at this moment. So now that y'all have that background, everything will make probably a little bit more sense as I go into what's going on with me right now. So right now, uh, I've had a day of like activity. I usually uh, am an intern for this place in the digital dove department, which is the digital um, department. Uh, We create videos, uh, short films, uh, whatever literally is digital media. So um, I am the intern. I get paid. I'm on payroll. um, And uh so I was supposed to have internship today but I took like a mental health day uh, and I also had to kind of take care of some health things because I had a lupus flare anyways uh after that I had acting class with my awesome acting coach uh after that I just had to come and rest so I've been resting and kind of just like I have so many clothes like so I was I've been kind of like organizing my clothes getting rid of old clothes that I don't need anymore making space for new clothes and shoes that I have uh, and just trying to just organize things and just like organize my life because that makes me feel like a lot more like a lot better um what else okay so right now I'm actually watching a bunch of like talks and like uh seminars and things like that because it's just like what I like to do in my free time I'm watching Victor Oda right now talking about the new moon uh and the energies that that will bring uh and also just kind of reading some excerpts out of my acts of faith book and um so I just got done eating some dinner and while I was eating dinner and like kind of getting some some of my carrot juice out of the fridge downstairs um uh, my case manager and other managers that work at this place uh basically came to me in a very serious way basically saying that we have to have a meeting we have to talk and I'm pretty sure it's about the fact that I babysat the other day and it's an overnight job so I had to babysit for two nights in a row so what that looks like is I go to my client's house and I stay at her house and watch her kid while she's out of town so I have to be there all day uh to make sure that the kid goes to school and gets out of school on time and and he's safe and he's cared for and has food and supervision and so I stay for two days two nights Um, so when you live in a place like this, each place is a a lot different. This is considered one of the better programs in the state, um, because of all the programs that they have and just all of the resources that you can acquire living here, which is pretty amazing. However, like some of the things are like a little stressful to deal with. There's like a lot of stress to actually deal with living in a place like this. And one right now that I'm dealing with is that, so you're actually not allowed to stay overnight anywhere. You're never, not. I'm gonna say never, but you're not allowed to stay out overnight. You're always supposed to sleep here every day. We have a curfew. Uh, the curfew on, on weeknights is seven o'clock p.m. And the, week, uh, and the curfew on week weekends is nine o'clock p.m., I believe. Um, or I might be mixing up. No, no, no. The curfew is nine o'clock all the time but on the weekends the curfew is I think 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or something like that anyways um it's hard for a lot of people to follow those rules because obviously like though we are needing this assistance we're still adults so people have multiple reasons why they stay out they could be at a friend's house or a partner's house and they stay out overnight because they're really far or it's really late or You know, they could just be comfortable or it's really cold or they're visiting friends or visiting family. So how they have it set up is that you can like you're supposed to at first pretty much ask your case manager like, hey, I'm just going to make up a name, Steve. Um, Could I have permission to stay out next week uh, on Friday and Saturday night? So they kind of follow that up with questions like, what are you staying out for? Who is it for? How is this benefiting you? And you answer those questions and you pretty much have to have like a firm reason of why you're out and it kind of almost has to benefit you in some way. So it's emergency situations, family situations, or to make money. So if you're working, that's a pass. Uh, If you are 
visiting a sick family member or a sick friend or there's an emergency or, you know, you're visiting with family that's coming in from out of town. All of those are acceptable reasons. So the step after that, having a valid reason, is doing paperwork. So you have to do paperwork to be able to stay out overnight. The paperwork basically writes down why you're out. Um, it puts down the contact information for the people or person you'll be staying with. And if you're making money or working, you have to put down what the job is, how it's benefiting you, or you have to put out why the why the outing is benefiting you. Um, so if you're out for an emergency, you say, oh, I have to be there for my family. It's benefiting me because I have to be there for my family and this is important to me or something of that nature. They approve, they have to approve it and then you are allowed to do so freely. So that is the kind of, to me, very strenuous, uh, process for being able to stay out overnight. Um, and they also contact the person that you put down. So if you put down Amy at at 314-781-8121 they're gonna call amy at that number and say hey is sophia or whatever staying with you tonight or whatever and you know they confirm it and that's kind of how they approve your overnight request um so because i did not finish my i wasn't able to so i've been working little background i've been working for the lady that I've been babysitting for for over a year. So they pretty much had to go through this process with me more than one time. Keep that in mind. So I've been doing this internship. I've been busy trying to take care of my chronic illness. I've just been busy. And I also have a lot of brain fog and all these kind of things going on that I'm trying to juggle mental health stuff, life stuff, you know, internship acting, short film, like all these things that I have in all my little categories. So I wasn't able to get to my paperwork. So I text my case manager like, hey, the night before I went, like, is there any way I can avoid suspension? Because I definitely have to go make this money. I'm in this position. I need this money, obviously. So she never got back to me. But I'm thinking to myself, like, even though they didn't approve me, I'm going to go anyways. I'm going to go and make this money. And if I get suspended, because that's the consequence and I'm getting to that, um, you know, I'm just going to go and make my money and deal with the consequences later. So I go, I babysit, I come back. I come back and you come, got to come to like through like a security clearance before you come into the building. Uh, as I came back to the building, I walked up to the building and they're like, you're, you're AWOL. That's what they call it when you stay out overnight without approval. And I'm like, I understand that. I actually had a babysitting job that I've done other times before I wasn't able to get my paperwork in but I would love to come into the building because I have medical bed rest which basically means I have access to my room anytime because I have medical needs that are like important and like urgent at all times uh so I'm just like can I enter the room they almost didn't want to let me enter they had to have another manager come out and basically be like so you know you could be suspended right and I'm like sure just whatever just let me upstairs so they let me into my room it was all good but they basically let me know like you're gonna have to have a meeting I had to they like pulled me out of like mm, like one of the meal times or maybe my roommate was like you got to come meet with manager I met with the manager asked me why I stayed out you know got my story blah 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 and they're basically like you have to have a meeting with managers and your case manager so you see how serious this gets like it gets shit gets serious just because you stayed out overnight without approval so they're like you got to meet with these people because you might have to serve a suspension because I stayed out two nights without permission I'd have to serve a suspension for two nights and I'll get to what the suspension is so they're just like, I'm just like, okay, when I have that meeting, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So the suspension basically entails, like, as you can see, this is my bed. This is my sleeping space. It's inside of a room with, it, it's a bunk bed, as you can see, and there's two bunk beds. So there's four girls. Uh, we have a pretty, you know, spacious room. And um, when you're suspended, what that looks like is you take your mattress off of your bunk bed off of your bed and you're supposed to take it downstairs to the NPR which is the like lounge area for everyone it's a really nice area there's like couches and the television uh well 
the gamers are always hogging the TV, but the other TV doesn't even work on the other side. But anyways, this is the lounge area. The people are walking over here like all the time, entering in and out of the offices. It's just a really public space. So when you're suspended, you're supposed to get your belongings. You don't have to take your mattress. I would not be doing that because that's too much, honey. And that's not up my alley. I would rather just take my little blanket and my little, my little pillow and my little moo piggy and I'll sleep on the damn couch you know what I'm saying that's how far I'll take that because you know all that other stuff is for the birds so basically um you take all your stuff and they've gotten a little bit more lenient about it because they used to make you pack up all your shit like we have lockers so we have all our stuff in our locker they usually make us pack everything take it all out like we're like we're being put out of this place and like put it in a discharge closet and as you serve your suspension and then you're supposed to like have a meeting to like basically say okay you can go back up to your room so they've gotten a lot more lenient now so now they just like you take whatever you're going to take for overnight and you go and you sleep in the lobby area, which is pretty much a public space where everyone hangs out and you have to sleep there overnight and you can't have access to your room until 4.30 a.m. So they actually let you back into your room in the ne for the next day or whatever. Um, and they're more lenient because at first they, you couldn't even have access to up here. You have to take everything you need and use the downstairs bathrooms and showers, which is like one shower. It's really like not the cleanest. It's just not comfortable. It's just totally stressful and like just like jarring and dramatic. It's just like so over the top for staying out overnight. Um, so basically right now I've just been kind of chilling and watch you know watch my educational videos and I'm waiting on the meeting that I will have to have basically for them to let me know if I will be suspended or not uh and if I am suspended I will have to take my blanket my my pillow and my moo piggy and go sleep on the public area lounge couch for two nights in a row and I will not be able to sleep in the comfort of my bed you know, so I'll have to take my lupus, my achy joints, my brain fog, my sensitivity to cold, my sensitivity to stress, um, and I will have to take myself downstairs to sleep. And I already have a hard time sleeping in my very comfortable, clean and, you know, clean bed that smells really good and it's very comfortable. You know, lupus just kind of causes you to have insomnia sometimes. Even the meds cause you to have insomnia. So I probably won't get any sleep if I am suspended. But if I'm not... I'll be so thankful to just like sleep in my bed. So I don't know. Spirit just caused me to feel like I need to share this for some reason. So I am. Uh, I think it's very important for people to know. <coughs> <coughs> sorry. What life is like for young people in these situations and just know that. <coughs> In other TLP programs or shelters or whatever you want to call them, some places are a lot worse. So this is one of the better ones. But <coughs> sorry, let me get some water, actually. Um, <coughs> there's worse ones. But basically, I still feel the need to. <coughs> I don't want to say exposed because that seems kind of negative. y'all dang that's what you get for talking so much i guess but i'm supposed to <coughs> but i guess i'm just supposed to shine a light on what happens in these situations so i'll update video later <coughs> about whether i got suspended or not maybe i'll try to edit it somehow <coughs> and since i'm coughing to death i'll just see you guys in that next video and let you know how it goes peace